Hey, it's Papa. I'm in the backyard of my house right now. And I just got finished with nine holes of golf at the Angel Park Golf Course. I'm really appreciative of being able to play golf and have that luxury because I owe it to a lot of you guys to give me the time and resources to actually do that. And at the same time, I use golf as a tool to help build RSD so that we can have even more content for you guys. And I also use it in nine different ways to gain success in my business life. So I wanted to use this time to create a business video about how golf and is more business golf when I play golf and how I could give you guys nine business success tips that I've learned while playing golf. Let's start on tip number one, focusing on financial freedom. For me, I've always focused on building RSD as a company that had that financial freedom the ability to kind of be automated and have a system where you had teams of people working together as opposed to me doing all the work myself. Now in most businesses, you use technologies to help you because when you have a small company, you kind of rely on technology as opposed to manpower because it's so expensive for payroll. Well, that's kind of like what we did when we first got started. Now we have a lot of people on payroll that are necessary for camera work and pretty much every aspect of our company so that we could grow and be successful. But we had built RSD from day one with this vision in mind that would be required for us to have that so that we can grow and be more successful. The second tip I've learned from playing golf is that when I go out there and I play, I kind of clear my mind. I kind of use it as a chance to give that kind of freedom and clarity, the ability to think outside the box and that entrepreneurial spirit and be, to be innovative is how I kind of like define entrepreneurial. It is kind of something that was acquired throughout our whole company in our content and also in our business tactics and our strategies. So when I go out there and I play golf, it's kind of like that chance to be entrepreneurial and have that financial freedom and also kind of have that chance to be innovative and clear my mind because there's so many things that are stuck when you're in a day-to-day -day routine that you need to kind of be out there and away from things to kind of be outside the box. I know that there's a strategic coach that gave lessons to me in New York about how everyone should focus on kind of stepping away from the business because most people are focused so much on the details that they never get to grow their business. And that's basically the thing that most entrepreneurs kind of struggle with and why they never grow or never become successful. Because usually when you first start, you're not really in a successful business. You're kind of working like twice the amount of money of a normal job and then working for half the amount of income. Now, if you want to kind of get outside of that, you got to step away from the business model, grow it, and a lot of that has to come with having a clear strategy. And we're lucky in our company, a lot of that strategy comes from Tyler. We need more execution in strategy. And that's where my specialization is, just getting stuff done. The third tip that I wanted to talk about is the success mindset when it comes to business has to be from the very beginning and that kind of carries you throughout the whole process. One of my advisors is a guy named Tony Shea. And I asked him, what was the most important thing that allowed him to become a billionaire? And he very simply gave me the answer that he first decided, hey, I want to become a billionaire. And that mindset kind of stuck with him the whole time. And every action he took, he kind of thought about, is this contributing towards that goal? Now, of course, anyone could say they want to become a billionaire. Everyone wants to become a really successful person. They want to have a lot of money. But it's not necessarily just about thinking about it. It's about taking the steps. However, Getting that mindset and thinking about things is the third tip that I want to focus on. The fourth tip is about getting started and taking action. And then once you take action, you get momentum. It's kind of like in golf because when you first get started, you take action and you suck really badly. At the same time, after a while, you slowly start getting momentum and that momentum grows over time. That's why they have a handicap in golf. I love that because it's similar to golf, like the golf is so similar to business because in that same sense, you kind of acquire a handicap. So what you do is in business, you kind of first start off and you don't have a lot of clients. You don't have a lot of infrastructure to help you. And therefore you have to push way harder to get that success. And when you get that relative success relative to where you are in business, especially as an entrepreneur, you celebrate it. So if I'm starting off in business and I made that year $100,000, I'd be like, yeah, that's awesome. At the same time, if that's how much I made with our present infrastructure, I'd go, oh man, that's horrible. And the same thing happens in golf, and that's why I appreciate the sport, because it reminds me so much about business, is that in golf, you have a handicap. So even if you've been playing for several years, if you enter a tournament and you're with people that are less experienced, 
then you have a situation where you could actually win the tournament and you get more strokes added to you if you're a better player and you lose less. You kind of like have this um, advantage. So off your score, let's say you shot a ton of extra strokes, you would have that taken off your score so that you would kind of compete a more of an even playing field. The fifth tip is about leadership. In leadership, you kind of have to be the guy who kind of spears on his own a lot of the time. Yeah, you have to have a team, you have to follow your leadership, but a lot of it has to come from leading by example. And I like how golf is more of a single person kind of playing sport. Now, I played ice hockey growing up. I thought that was awesome. It was a great team sport. And then everyone contributes to that team. And there's leaders within the team for scoring. I also view the goalie as a team leader because he's there protecting everyone else. Yet in golf, you're kind of responsible for every action that you take. And then I think that's really, really important to kind of like have that you lead by example kind of attitude. And that's another thing that I really like in terms of business. In every action, I think, hey, am I working hard enough to be an inspiration to the other people on the team? Am I taking more action? Am I going to be leading by example? Or am I kind of just sitting back? And you'll get a lot more respect from your people that you work with if you actually lead by example as well. <music> Tip six is about work-life balance. Now the cool thing about golf for me is I get to do both at the same time. I'm literally doing text messages, team meetings, even while I'm playing golf. And I think that's really cool because I've always viewed it really important to have that pleasure, that time for relaxation, yet the time for business. And when I go out there, I can do both at the same time. I view that as a great luxury and that's another thing that I like to do. So I've always been a great multitasker. I've been so much of a multitasker, even when I was playing high school football, I would take off my top shirt my uh, button-down shirt and my t-shirt at the same time just to save that extra 30 seconds. I've always viewed time as the most valuable resource that you possibly have. Now when you're playing golf, some people view it as like a slow playing sport, but you'd be surprised about how exciting it really is. It actually kind of like challenges you. You actually feel like it's a good workout. For a lot of you guys, you're like, wow, it just seems like that slow sport that you see on TV. It's not like really impressive to watch. But when you actually try it, I recommend everyone try it, you actually see it's quite a lot of fun. It's a lot easier to pick up than people think. I also think it's important to have the right people with you. And in golf, I get to put the right person in my cart. You only have one other person in your cart. And I think it's really cool because after finishing a round of golf, if you sit next to a person for that entire time, you get to know him better than you would if you were in like a three or four hour business meeting. Similar to like day twos and pickup. By having somebody doing a fun activity with you as opposed to just doing a business meeting, you have a situation where you really get to know the person and you have fun at the same time. You're investing in their emotional bank account as opposed to just doing something that's work related. So many people forget in business that a lot of what happens in business is about emotions and a connection and you getting that rapport. That's why in day two, so much of that is about comfort and trust and building that rapport. But in business, it's the same thing. I'll take my attorneys out in the golf course on a regular basis. In fact, most of my meetings with my attorneys are over golf. And the same thing happens when most of my staff want to meet with me here locally in Vegas. The next thing I want to talk about in golf is about simultaneous job management. Because in golf, I'm literally with a headset on making phone calls and having meetings and playing golf. Yet I have a buddy on the other side of me. And I mean, I'm always doing simultaneously job management. I mean, it's similar to right now, I'm trying to manage my cat and entertain him and just have some fun with uh, Jack Maurer here. His name is mauled after Jack Bauer because he's my favorite TV show guy. And Jack Maurer is an adventurous cat. But I, I wanted to talk to you about multitasking because I'm all about multitasking. In terms of working, I even have a treadmill desk so I could work and walk at the same time. I have two screens set up with a cell phone device attached to my phone so I could, or to my ear so I could do Skype sessions while doing email at the same time doing group meetings. Because so many people, they're like, wow, there's not enough time in the day to do everything I want. But I'm literally doubling up the amount of things I could do just by doing two things at the same time. And if I could do more than that, it's even better. It's a challenging skill set. There's a lot of books out there about how to do this. Um, I'll probably go into more detail about this one particular topic because you could probably go into a lot of the topics I'm talking about now and make a whole book out of them. But I'm just trying to give you why I think that golf is important. This is an analogy to business. And so here's a quick overview of what that tip is. <music> the 
The last tip that I want to talk about is the similarities between outer game pickup and business. Now, a lot of it I was talking earlier about day twos, but I think the most important thing about it is that you're having fun. So when I'm doing golf, I'm actually having a great time. I feel relaxed, I feel free. I'm in this beautiful environment that's so awesome that it feels like I'm in a fairy tale. Yet at the same time, I'm actually working. Most people's jobs suck. I would say that almost all jobs suck at all, um, not all times, but almost all jobs suck at some point in time or other. Even when you're in like the most fun job as like a rock star or people who I've interviewed even as like porn stars for those of you guys who are like toy into sex, hardcore sex, and maybe even sex is addictions. But the thing is, all these jobs have things that suck about them. Even uh, being the CEO of an awesome company like RSD, there's times where you're stuck in the routine of doing things that are kind of mundane. And you just try to get out of that and innovate and add to the creative parts of life. As, as long as you realize that, there's fun times as well. There's always that yin and yang, that balance. I think that's the most important things to remember. However, I got to end this video. I know that my cat here in Las Vegas loves chasing lizards, catching them, and showing off to them. So I'm gonna let him go and I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys as well. Thanks guys for listening.